Welcome back to Arm of the Week. Today we're looking at a fish with hands, which is unsurprisingly dubbed the handfish. This isn't actually one species, and in reality is a whole family called Brachionic thyidae. Despite being a whole family, there are only 13 extant species, with a further two species being extinct. One from prehistoric times, Histionotophorus bassani, and the very recently extinct species, the smooth handfish, that only died out in 2020. Interestingly, the family is part of the order Lophiformes, meaning they are actually a type of anglerfish. What many people don't realise is how diverse anglerfish are, with other benthic dwelling fish like the red-lipped batfish also being in this order. It's not just the dark, fat, scary fish with lanterns above their heads. Despite being an entire family of historically 14 species a few years ago, they all live around Australia and Tasmania. They need cold water to live in, and so the Antarctic currents that come up around Tasmania are perfect. On a micro level, they are benthic fish, obviously, as their whole thing is their hand-like appendages that they use to literally walk across the seafloor. They live quite solitary lives and naturally have small restricted distributions, which can make them very vulnerable to damage in their habitat, as I'll explain in the threat section. The diet of the handfish is pretty standard and expected, small shellfish, shrimp and worms that they find while walking across the seabed. As they are anglerfish, some species do possess small reduced elysium, but they are not used for hunting, and seem to be simply a vestigial trait that other species have now lost. Like anglers, they have a wide, open jaw, and so can crush their mollusk prey very easily. Different species will obviously vary slightly when it comes to breeding, but generally they lay between 80 to 200 eggs in each clutch. They lay the eggs onto various things in the seafloor, most commonly on ascidians, some of which are known as sea squirts. These are sac-like invertebrates that inhabit the seafloor and are sort of just there, but apparently they provide excellent cover for eggs of the handfish. Sometimes they will choose other things like seagrass, sponges and tubes of polycake worms that have been abandoned, or the inhabitants might have been eaten by the handfish themselves, as they are known to sometimes prey upon them. Their hands are actually just their pectoral fins. They are longer and stronger than normal pectoral fins, and the fans at the ends allow for even weight distribution on the soft sands. The reason for this method of movement over just swimming is thought to be a structural adaptation for feeding, as they generally don't feed upon many other fish and prefer slow mollusks and other things on the seabed. Their skin is covered in dermal denticles, which is just a fancy way of saying tooth-shaped hard scales. Lots of fish are like this, but in the handfish it's particularly useful to have a sturdy protective skin. Handfish are sadly under threat. Almost all the species are endangered, critically endangered, or extinct in the case of the smooth handfish. The smooth handfish and its extinction marks the first modern day marine fish species to be declared extinct, which is particularly sad when we learn that it was described as rather common by European naturalists to Australia when it was first collected in 1802. The reason for its extinction and threat of extinction faced by the other species is a culmination of factors, but the core problem is global warming. As we know, they enjoy colder waters but since 1900 the waters around southern Australia have warmed on average by 3.6 degrees Celsius, forcing them into ever smaller territories around Tasmania that enjoy colder currents up from Antarctica, and leading to the full extinction of the smooth handfish. Other problems faced include the destruction of habitat and eggs by fishing trawlers, pollution, and even invasive species in the form of the northern Pacific sea star that are known to eat their eggs, and even the ascidians that they lay their eggs on, leaving few suitable spots for egg laying. Whether there might be a bit of hope, there are programs developing to study and monitor some of the species population like the red handfish, particularly because it is thought there are fewer than a hundred individuals in this species left, and hopefully with proper habitat protections they might recover. In the case of the smooth handfish, it isn't unknown for species thought to be extinct to come back. We call these Lazarus taxa, and it might just be that we haven't found any in the last 200 years, not that there aren't any. That might be wishful thinking, but I do hope it's right. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.